All right, I hope my voice is coming good. Am um, I heard? I hope so. Uh, first of all, shalom, everybody. I hope the sound is coming good from your side. Let me know, please, if you can hear me. <clears throat> uh, All is good? All right. Uh, as you see, we just received news, and this is from uh, Fox News, that Israel, right now as we speak, is attacking Iranian forces inside Iran and in Syria, Damascus, and other area, and uh, in uh, Iraq. Uh, this is Fox News, just news right now. And the reporter was speaking from Israel, and actually it's confirmed. I check other news agency, but look like they are the first to announce it. Uh, and what they are saying that uh, explosion heard all over Iran. And they are saying that even there is explosions, but they did not confirm yet. It happened in the city or territory where the Iranian they have their nuclear facility. Uh, if this is true, uh, for sure this is a different level of uh, of respond, and Iran is going to pay a very high price for what they did just last week. And I'm so glad actually that the Iran the, the Israeli they decide to do uh, uh, this because if they don't. Uh, the those Iranian they will you know they will uh, they won't ever stop you know uh, you have to stop those criminals those terrorists if you don't if you don't show them let us say in, in the Middle East we call it the red eye if you don't show them the red eye they will take your eyes so uh, I will play uh, what Fox News is saying as a start. And then we will update you with more news as they arrive. She is live for us at the Pentagon. Jen, what are you learning about this? Well, Trace, the Pentagon is not officially commenting on any of the reports of explosions that have taken place inside Iran as well as in Syria and Iraq tonight. But a well-placed U.S. military source uh, tells, confirms to me that what appears to be Israeli strikes inside Iran have taken place, but I am told that they are, quote, limited in nature. So what we have heard so far from Iranian press is that there were three explosions in the Isfahan area, which, as, Trace has, as Trey has explained, that is the location of the Natanz uh, nuclear facility. We have no indication as of yet that the Natanz facility was the target or any of the nuclear facilities were a target tonight. You could have situations where there are air defense systems that would be targeted. Uh, what we know from past reporting on the situation in Iran and what its capabilities are is that Iran is very limited in terms of, and we saw this on Saturday night, in terms of the number of ballistic missile launchers that they have. These are mobile launchers, and they have between 100 and 200 of those launchers. Uh, Israel knows that. Israel saw what Iran was capable of. So look what happened now. The stupid Iranian regime, they exposed themselves. They exposed their weakness. So now the Israeli, they knew exactly what is the weakness of the Iranian. Uh, they knew now what is their strength. And obviously their strength is useless because simply uh, they can't even shoot one missile to arrive to uh, to Israel. So what the point, right? If you cannot reach your weapon all the way to the enemy, then you're in, all the weapon you have is a trash. So it doesn't matter how many missiles you can shoot. If all of them, they fail and they could not reach the target, well, you are shooting in the air. You are wasting just money. 
And good evening, I'm Trace Gallagher. It's 10 p.m. on the East Coast, 7 o'clock here in Los Angeles. And this is a breaking news edition, edition of Fox, Fox News at night. night. There are reports coming in that Israel has now begun its highly anticipated retaliatory strikes against Iran. Now, we are tracking these developments and we are hearing that explosions have been heard over Iran proper, as well as in southern Syria, and explosions heard above Iraq. We do not know if any areas of Iraq were hit. We think there were some explosions in southern Syria, and there are reports of possibility of strikes in southern Iran near the Natanz and the Forto nuclear facilities. Remember, this is what I want, actually. This country should not ever have a chance to have a nuclear weapon. As you see, they don't have nukes and they are doing what they are doing. So what they would do if they have nukes? And this is the golden opportunity to Israel. This opportunity will not be repeated again because now they have the excuse to retaliate. So if the Israeli did not take this opportunity, this will be a big, huge failure. If, if they go and just attack... Uh, an army base here, army base, that, that would do nothing, you know? Or even a manufacturer for drones. I mean, their drones is useless. Not to Israel, because in Israel, you know, uh, I, I just saw in the news now, they are testing a microwave uh, weapon, which can shoot uh, uh, drones by microwave. They don't even need a missile no more. So we know that the Israeli are way advanced than all their enemies, and that make the enemy weapon and missiles is useless. It's like a firework. So destroying that is something which is why you want to destroy something anyway, cannot hurt you. For sure you should destroy it anyway, but I mean, there's something more important, which is the nuclear facility. You know, if they destroy it, Iran need another 20, 30 years to rebuild and to reach that point. So let us hope so. These are the facilities that, that are said to be places that you can produce nuclear weapons. They also have a uranium conversion facility in Isfahan. And this is also in southern Iran. And there are reports that there have been airstrikes in that area as well. Let's get live on the ground now to Tel Aviv. That's where Trey Yinks joins us live. Trey, what are you hearing? What are we learning? Yeah, hey, Trace, good evening. Right now we are following reports out of the region of airstrikes taking place in Iran, Iraq, and Syria. The Israelis at this moment have not confirmed that this is the retaliation to that massive Iranian drone and missile attack last weekend. But here's what we know. Some outlets citing American officials. And again, these are preliminary reports based on the information that we are gathering right now. We've reached out to Israeli defense officials and are waiting for comment. Local media is reporting explosions in the Iranian city of Isfahan. Isfahan sits about 200 miles to the south of the Iranian capital of Tehran. At this location, there is an Iranian nuclear facility. There are also reports of activity at other locations across Iran. This is significant because, remember, the initial reporting leading up to tonight had to do with what might be a limited Israeli response to this large-scale attack last weekend conducted by the Iranians. So in terms of the targets that were like... See here when they are talking about limited, this limited is, uh, uh, you know, is a very flexible word. Uh, because it's limited if the Iranian did not respond. And I am sure that if the Israeli uh, hit the nuclear facility, the Iranian, they will go crazy. And even though they cannot really hurt Israel, but they will, uh, let us say, they will set in fire all the borders of Israel. And maybe this is what the Israeli, they want. They want to finish Hezbollah. They want to finish it, let us say, they are they are they are moving the water so let us see what you can do you know let us see what you have and let us see what we have so now if uh, 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 we will wait and see what is really exactly uh, the the result of this uh, this city they are talking about where all the new uh, facility is located uh, they call them research supposedly it's a research it's not really for nukes you know but we know what they are 
and I hope they will hit you know the Iranian they saw the show before uh, like the huge tunnels under the ground and they have thousands of missiles and drones I hope they are Israeli they are using uh, like if they use uh, F-35 F-35 is capable to reach Iran and come back and the radar will not be able to even to see it but if uh, uh, F-35 is not capable of carrying uh, huge let us say bombs uh, enough to destroy those underground facility uh, so we don't know really what Israeli is using now. Is it F-16? Is it F-35? Uh, is what 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 they are using? We don't know. Uh, the the attack itself is going to explain what exactly they used. You know, as you know, like there is there is airplanes are not made for heavy duty bombs. You know, uh, they can do bombing, but not not like you know some bombs like they are. Let us say. Uh, thousands of uh, of pounds uh, so there is a limit for those uh, fighter jets of what they can carry and what they can accomplish uh, the f-16 is more exposed to the radar than the, uh, uh, the f-35 uh, but the f-16 can do better in in uh, uh, in the attack so we will see if there is any news you know coming after that likely uh, hit in any sort of strike and retaliation from the Israelis. You are looking at nuclear research facilities. Additionally, any sort of IRGC locations across the Middle East in places like Syria and Iraq, and then Iranian backed proxies across the region. And so Iran backed Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias certainly would be on that target list for the Israelis. The Israelis looking to send a message to Iran if this is confirmed that they are behind these strikes, not to ever attack directly from Iranian territory toward Israel, and also to ensure that they will keep control of their proxies across the region. The big concern here has to do with Iranian nuclear aspirations. And I want to break down something very important here, Trace, because if it is confirmed that Isfahan was one of the targets for the Israelis tonight in this retaliation, it is significant for two reasons. We'll point back to June of last year when the UN nuclear watchdog was concerned that they w went into a probe and found uranium particles that were enriched up to 83 percent, just short of the 90 percent weapons grade material line an indication that Iran is getting very close to the ability to create a nuclear weapon. Other watchdogs over the past several months have said the Iranian breakout time for such a weapon is basically zero. And this means Iran, in response to this, may not react militarily, but could say they are changing their nuclear doctrine. One other important note here, Trace, when we look at the Iranian attack last weekend. Iran, for the first time in their country's history, fired on Israel directly with what appeared to be Shahab ballistic missiles. These are the missiles that if Iran were to create a nuclear warhead, they would use to target any country around the world. And they used this missile last weekend without a nuclear warhead. I just uh, received news. It says that the Iranian uh, news agency, the official, uh, they announced that an extreme powerful uh, explosion happened in the capital of Iran and in the area of Asfahan and they close all the airports uh, all the air like the airspace airports several several uh, 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 flights everything is cancelled uh, they are they are <laughs> they are Indian they claim they shut down many <laughs> the many is small tiny Israeli uh, drone. <laughs> you know, the Israeli they are using a uh, small drone. <laughs> I mean, look how stupid how you say a very extreme, powerful explosion just happened, and then you say small drones. <laughs> I mean, a small drone can carry what exactly? You know, how a small drone can hit the target with extreme powerful explosion. You tell me. I mean, what they are using, uh, you know, a, a, a cappuccino. So, I mean, welcome to the Middle East. You know, this is where I'm coming from. I know there are news. There are news. There is, you know, 
if there is a thousand die, they will say one. Unless it's from the enemy. If it's the enemy, if, if one die from the enemy, they will say a thousand. So we know them. Uh, they are saying now, <clears throat> they are saying that the, uh, the nuclear facility in Asfahan is totally safe. No worry. This is the Iranian speaking, you know. Yeah, so the Iranian announcing that nothing happened to the a nuclear facility. Uh, oh. Let us see. Yeah, and you know the what make it more strange that the Israeli until now they close no anyone can go and check the airport of Tel Aviv flights anyone can check for us let me do that I want to see if uh, because as I heard the uh, uh, the Israeli airport are, are are working fine I mean they don't even like, they are not even worry about anything so Israel uh, airport light schedule let us see Ben Gurion all on time I see it in the front of me in the screen oh the first one coming my way is Dubai <laughs> I mean, AK Dubai, come on, come on, yeah, yeah. So as you see, all the flights are working fine. There's nothing, no change. Uh, let me show you. Uh, this is the official uh, website. And, and it was. Give me a second. <clears throat> as you see, this is the government website of Israel. Uh, oh, delayed, delayed delayed but on time yeah only only those are delayed i think i think it's not the israeli who delayed them i think the airlines they are worried so they delayed them but as you see the rest is on time you see uh, especially the israeli airline everything is on time there is uh, 179 a flight only the first few four they are uh, delayed but the rest everything is on time there's no change so the israeli are very comfortable there in their skin and they are not worried about anyone attacking them so there is a delay between uh this is uh i don't know what like this is a, this is tel aviv time what is the time now in tel aviv What is the time now in Israel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see there's no change. Even they did not even ask people to go anywhere or to go to the uh, basement. And there is many reasons for this, you know. The Israeli right now they knew uh, what what the what the Iranian are capable of. So those stupid Iranian by attacking Israel last month, they expose all their ability. Uh, they have a great ability, by the way. I mean, they have yeah, they have a great ability, but not when it's come to uh, to Israel. I mean, those they can be scary for a country like Turkey, uh, Syria, Iraq. You know. Not to Israel. So the Bintu are fighting whom? Uh, let us see. Uh, all right. Three big explosion close to uh, Iranian uh, uh, army base in Asfahan. Iranian, they announced that they activated their defense. <laughs> I mean, don't you think it's too late? <laughs> they activated their air, air defense. I mean, have you ever heard of this? So after the enemy come, come and attack you 
and explosions start popping up like 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 bubbles everywhere and now you say you activated <laughs> well thank you very much that is a hell of activation uh, the Iranian they say all what the Jews did it was a failure nothing really have done uh, okay Uh, an official American saying that Israel did not attack the nuclear facility of Iran. All right, let us see. Let us see. The Israeli Air Force, they attacked the city of Suwaida in the south of Syria. Where there is Iranian militant base base there. Uh, right now in Israel, there is a, a security meeting for the uh, air force. The Israeli announce the Israeli they the, uh, they inform the American Thursday that they will do an attack. Uh, Yeah, all the uh, flights in, into, from Iran into Iran are, uh, there is no more flight. Well, I hope that this attack is not just a stupid thing, like it just to show Iran. Because as I said, this is an opportunity to show the Iranian their size. Uh, it's not enough to go and show them that we can reach the heart of Iran and your air defense this is the major uh, uh, message. Your air defense is useless. And as you see, the, the Israeli, they will go, they will come back, and nothing, nobody will shoot them down. Uh, the Iranian regime announced that the, the, the Iranian Islamic Revolution Forces Guard, they are in the maximum uh, activation. All right. Yeah, we will see what's going to happen. Like uh, uh, one, you know, one after one, uh, the news is coming. But I hope it's not just a silly attack. It just say we did it, you know. This is not really what what should be done. It is possible that this attack is not really meant to be an attack as much it is to be a message to what we can do, you know. Well, I hope not. Let us see. The, the alarm in the north of Israel is activated, the Syrian, like, they, you know, like for, for uh, they, they might be expecting Hezbollah to uh, shoot some rockets. The Iranian TV confirmed that the, uh, uh, the Iranian nuclear is safe and did not been hit. That would be very disappointing, actually, if the Iran if the Israeli did not do that, because when you are going to do this, when they have their new nuke, I mean, there is a better time than now to do it. I know, that would be a very stupid mistake from Netanyahu if he did not do it now, because those those opportunity will not be repeated again. You know, not every time. Not every day you will be able to launch an attack. This is a response, and many countries support you. 
So why you wanna wait? Uh, right now, there is the Iranian government, the highest official, they are in alarmed security meeting. Uh, let us see. Yeah, until now, there's nothing really. Uh, nothing until now. For me, until now, there's nothing to to be considered a good news until now. Successful in targeting Israel. So again, tonight, we are unable to confirm the reports at this moment. But initial reporting indicates explosions in Iran, Iraq, and Syria. And this does come on the heels of the threats of Israeli retaliation following that Iranian attack last weekend that included ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and drones. Trace. And if I can ask you about the diplomacy here, Trey, very quickly, because there were reports coming out of Qatar today saying that the United States said they would okay Israel going into Rafah, a mission in Rafah if they did not retaliate against Iran. So is it your understanding that it appears as of late today, the United States did not, was not privy to any information about this attack, or is it just too soon to know? It's too soon to know, but we should note the Israelis were coordinating closely with the Americans and an informal coalition to respond. Anyway, uh, 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 as I said, I hope it's not just a silly uh, respond. And I will not be surprised, by the way, because this uh, uh, guy, Netanyahu, he is, is you know, is, uh, for me, he is not trustworthy. And I, I don't take him seriously. Uh, he do things for political reason, not for, for his country reason. Yeah, until now, I don't see really anything serious to consider and trying to check other news agencies. The airport of Israel is still, everything is the same. Nothing changed. There's only five flights is delayed in, his, in, in, uh, in Ben Gurion airport. It's not canceled, it's only delayed. So let us see what will happen, you know. Would be very disappointing if the Israeli just hit a small, tiny target just to show them that they can hit. We know that they can hit. We do not need this to tell. We, you know, we need a respond which can make the enemy disabled. Yeah, I don't understand really why they did not attack the uh, the nuclear facility. I'm not sure what uh, what is the wisdom on that. You know how they are saying that the Iranian, they are going to be capable to have their uh, uh, their their nuke uh, uh, ready in a few weeks. And the Israeli, they do nothing about it. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Why the Israeli don't want to do anything about it? That's not, that's not even smart, right? I mean, uh, uh, if you know that the enemy is almost... And this is the enemy who want to destroy you, want to kill you, want to do a genocide. It's not like someone he is maybe, maybe not. They, even, they are not even shy to talk about it. They keep saying death to America, death to Israel. Uh, right now is uh, it's almost morning time in Iran, right? I don't know, maybe it's 4 a.m. in the morning.
Well, the U.S., you know, the, the, the Israelis do not need the U.S. to join them. Yeah, it might be just a silly, silly respond, very disappointing. And I think if this is what they did, uh, the Israeli would be sorry for doing this. Uh, you know, always the Israeli, by the way, they, they are not lucky. They have the worst government, the worst leader in the last, let us say, uh, 30 years. Their stupidity, they keep signing, you see, uh, Yasser Arafat was a terrorist, and he is a terrorist. The stupid Israeli, they obey the stupid American, and they sign a peace agreement with Yasser Arafat. By doing that, Yasser Arafat, now his name became president. And the Palestinian, now they have a state. Can you believe it? This is what happens when you have a stupid president or prime minister. So, the Israeli, they choose shame, in exchange for peace because signing peace agreement with a terrorist who just literally what he do he kidnap airplanes yes Arafat if you go check the history every week they kidnap a European airplane not even Israeli and he asked for ransom money so when the American they bring a terrorist like this a scumbag and they call him Mr. President and they made him a president And not only that, they gave Palestine a status inside the United Nations. So now it's been recognized as a government. So from terrorist into government by the help of two persons, the stupid American president and the stupid Israeli prime minister. So the Israeli, they choose exchange shame for the sake of peace. They did not get peace, they got the shame. After 30 years something, the Israeli now, they notice we cannot give them a state. Look at them. Look what they will do. So now they, they themselves, they don't want the two-state uh, solution. For the last 20 years, they were promoting for it. Now they notice that they're being stupid. And now again, if this attack did not do the job, which is, should be done, the Israeli, they will notice later, two years, three years, maybe a week from now, that they are being so stupid and they lost a great opportunity to show the enemy their real size. Uh, let us see if there's any new news. Nothing, nothing until now. And it might be, it might be not what we thought. You know, it might be just a stupid attack, you know, attacking like a, a few bases here and there. Uh, if this is what happened, this is useless. Or what have done, uh, actually nothing. What, what, what does this mean? We were laughing at the Iranian because they accomplished nothing a few days ago. Well, if the Israeli, they accomplished nothing in this attack, we will be laughing at them too. Because any attack accomplished nothing is not an attack. It's just a stupid propaganda. It's just a flash in the news. So we want to see what they accomplished in this attack. Did they really destroy anything serious? You see, remember I told you, the Israeli, if they want to do something serious, they should attack the refinery of the oil of Iran or the refinery because this is where the money is coming from if the Iranian have no money well no terrorism no clear nuclear nothing money you need money you need money for anything I mean if you if you have a dead person from your family you have to it's going to cost you a lot to bury the dead man so even funeral costs a lot of money nothing for free so the Israeli did not get really 
until now what they should do. They should close the faucet. Uh, all right. Until now I see no extra news, even in Fox News. Let us see if there is anything in you. We will, ref we will refresh the Fox News page and see if there is anything. Look like there is nothing really. Well, maybe it's just a silly attack, useless. Let us see here. Yeah, I don't see anything serious. Uh, hmm. I mean, so what is the point of this attack? Yeah, I don't know. That is very silly. When I heard this in the news, I said, oh, oh okay, that's, that's what I was waiting for. That is the last thing I'm waiting for. I mean, this is even this is even uh, 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 it's like uh, it's like it's like kids, you know. It's it's just uh, uh, it's a short time, you know. This is not an attack. So what you did? What you attack exactly? That's not even this is this is cannot be considered anything to be even respected. The Iranian, they said, they were able to shoot down a small tiny drone from Israel. A small tiny. <clears throat> I think it's sex <laughs> I mean, even them, they're exp they are they are describing it as a small tiny. <laughs> oh boy! The Iranian they announced that they close all their airspace in the front from and to Iran. All Iranian airspace is shut down. Yeah, it might be just a silly thing. It, you know, maybe the, the Israelis just want to show them how far we can go. And we can reach your ground easy. That's all. So behave yourself. That's all. Very, very disappointing. For me, this is a very disappointing, actually. Uh, because there's no point. Iran under attack. Who cares? I mean, I this is uh, the voice command of Google. I said Iran under attack. Sometimes Google, sometimes Google understand me wrong. Sometimes I say six, it's it type six. <laughs> so if the spelling is wrong, it's okay, my friend. Who care? This is what you are worried about. Who care? Prophet Muhammad do not know how to write, how to read. Hello. <laughs> That's not the issue. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, until now there is nothing really. We will see. We will see later what uh, what this uh, what the result of this you know action. It it might be nothing really. You know. It might be totally nothing. It might be the Israeli are just uh, trying to uh, uh, you know to test the ability of the air defense of Iran but I'm uh, even this one doesn't make sense because I am sure the Israeli they knew everything about the air defense of Iran and their capability and that's why they are doing this attack because they knew that they have no really air defense they have, they spend a lot of money on attack weapon, not on defense. The Iranian airplanes are from the 70s, from the time of the Shah, the king, you know. Uh, even the ones they have, they don't, they are short of parts. The Russian airplanes is useless, you know. Even the Russian, they can't even fly their own airplane over Ukraine. Um... Uh, so we know that their defense is, is, is useless. Check Iran international news. I have all the news here in front of me. Look at, look at this, what the Iranians are saying. The, the, the explosion people they heard in Iran is not because, this is what the Iranians are saying, is not because the Israeli attack, but because the, the Iranian, they activated their defense. How that, I mean, how, that, so if you activated your air defense, that will make explosions? How that work? I never heard of such a stupid thing. Activating air defense will make a huge explosions? That is even silly. Do we have here anyone from Israel? I guess uh, Israeli now are asleep, snoring. Look, the Iranians they say there's no there's no attack. So what is this? <laughs> the Iranian they are saying there's no attack. No no attack, no attack at all. Israel, Israel did not attack. I mean, can you believe it? So what those explosions and those things and you know I mean this is the most weird. You know, you cannot take news from the Middle East. I grew up in the Middle East all my life. There's one thing I have to, I, I have to give the Middle Eastern a certification. I never saw people, they lie as they do. I mean, they are the top ethnic group in lying in the world. You can be watching the event in the front of your eyes and still they deny it's happening. Welcome to the Middle East. This is why I don't I don't trust anything anything they say. You know I mean I, we I, we know what what how it is there. Unbelievable. And look, they are saying there's no attack from abroad. In the same time, we is they are saying we shut down many 
drones. How you say there's no attack? <laughs> there's no attack, Abdul. There's no attack from abroad. No, there's no attack. But we shut down many drones. Uh, so the drones is coming from where? And if there is no attack, why you are shutting down your airspace? Uh, no, 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 this is a lifestyle in the Middle East. You know, lying, lying, cheating, is a is a very normal. Uh, like from the morning until night, this is what you do at your. If you want to survive, it's it's an act of survival. You know, if you want to survive in those countries. You have to lie from the morning until you go to sleep. Even, even in your dream, you have to lie, you know? So lying is the is the is the like the source of lie. If you say the truth, you will you will, you will die. You, you will be killed. I'm serious, you will be killed. I'm, I'm not joking. If you say your political opinion truthfully, you will be dead in two seconds. In two seconds, not in two minutes, you, your family will disappear. The ants will take you, <laughs> the secret ants, and they will connect electricity to your anus. Uh, so you cannot speak, you cannot be free. You have, in order to survive, you have to lie. You cannot, uh, you, you cannot uh, criticize religion, you die. You cannot criticize the government, you die. You can't criticize your wife, she will kill you. Who's left? <laughs> Those women in the Middle East, my friend, they eat 24 hours a day and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the man, he's smaller and smaller and smaller. And then she fought at him and he fly. And this is what happened. The Iranian, they decide to fart at Israel. Uh, See, an official Iranian saying to Reuters, there was no attack from anywhere into Iran. That's what they're saying. Official, Iranian official, saying there is no attack from anywhere into Iran. So what's going on? Yeah. This name, this is the official uh, Iranian uh, news agency, said there is zero attack from abroad into Iran. So why you close the air for the airspace and airport and if there's no attack? Lord have mercy. Again, welcome to the Middle East. New York Times confirmed that the Israeli attack Iranian bases close to Tehran, to Asfahan. All right. Yeah, as you see, you cannot take a news from anybody because the news contradict each other. So we don't know really what's going on. The Israeli, they don't talk much. They do more than they talk. You know, they do, uh, they they cook the cook and then they talk about it. The Arab and the, the Muslims, they talk about it, but they never, they never cook the cook. You know, like they talk about cooking you, making you shish kebab, uh, Allahu Akbar, Inshallah, you know. But will never happen. That's why they do the opposite. They go, they fry you, they make your shish kebab, they destroy your cities, they track your terrorists, they you know they assassinate uh, 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 them from even under the ground, and then after they would they put it in the news if they put it in the news. You know, and the most funny thing, 
there's the news agencies they bring you someone who's supposed to be expert and the second i hear the word expert i say that's that that's fun I, I, just to give you but this is not only in uh, in arabian news agency like even uh, american like you know when the war happened in uh, ukraine they brought i forgot the name of the general colonel colonel his name i think douglas this Douglas, for some reason, he is really weird, and it looked like he hate Ukraine. You know, uh, Russia will take Ukraine in 24 hours, maximum 48 hours. The president will be in USA, I guarantee you, in within 48 hours. I advise him to go right away to the airport of Germany, him and his family, otherwise he's going to be captured. I mean, the guy, and he is an uh, expert, you know, expert, yeah, yeah. 24 hours. So when they bring you an expert, uh, just laugh. It doesn't matter who is the expert, American, not American, doesn't matter. Because always the only one who knows what's going on is those who make decision and they have the capability of doing things. The rest of the world can talk, can guess, can say maybe, and still your information is limited. So especially there's some countries we know nothing about them you know like american our people they think uh, i mean they have a, they have label for every country so like as an example they label ukraine so ukraine is nothing you know it's just a, a, a country from the soviet union previously is weak government is bad uh, people are bad economy is bad so how those people they can go to war eh, we label them so they give everybody a label you know so everybody have a label for uh, for his jacket in his in their closet but then when the war happened real war you know you will find that everything every label they have is wrong like the american they label osama bin laden as a hero before Washington Post made a big article about a hero who left his country and he joined the Mujahideen to fight the Soviet Union. The stupid American, they labeled Taliban before as uh, freedom fighters. Same as Osama bin Laden. So they always gave wrong label to anything around them. This is why I say never take uh, what a news agency says to you and those who they, the expert, they bring a coronel. Those, they, you know, are, are the last one to learn. I can listen to them to, to learn from their experience about war because for sure they have experience I don't have. Uh, especially they spend most of their life in the army, right? However, every person is dependent on how many war he was attending not how many days was in the office because being at war is not the one who is in the office is the one who is in the ground and how much he learned about the country so to learn about vietnam from being in the office you'd learn nothing to learn about vietnam you have to go to vietnam fight in the ground and then you can tell me about what happened in vietnam let us see uh Yeah, the Iranian is still confirming that there is no attack. Well, we don't know. Thank you, thank you, Edie. You serve in the Marine? God bless you, brother. When I was in the army, <laughs> this is a story I will never forget. <laughs> you know the drill sergeant; those guys are so crazy. I don't. He comes in the front of my face and he shout, "Go down in the mud!" And I don't want to go in the mud. I mean, come on, this is. <laughs> so I said to him, "No English." He said, "What? What's happening?" He started using dirty words. 
They are allowing people to join the army. They don't even speak English. How in the world we can win a war? So he pushed me. He said, you stay there. Okay, so now I don't speak English, no English. So at night, you know, like soldiers, they have their rooms, like, you know, you know, like 20, 30 soldiers in one room. So I was sitting and I was telling the soldiers about Islam. And then suddenly the whole room became so quiet. Everybody so quiet. And I noticed they are looking behind me, you know. The drill sergeant, he just came. <laughs> So he put his hand on my shoulder and he says, No English, huh? No English. Okay, follow me. Come with me. <laughs> no English. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so he took me outside. He said, Listen, you did lie to me. I was I said I was joking. I said, No, you didn't. <laughs> I said, but he said to me, but I like what you said about Islam. For this reason only, I'm not going to punish you. However, you have to go and make yourself dirty. Come back after two hours, okay? Make yourself dirty, really dirty, to show them that I punished you. You know. <laughs> anyway, few years later, I saw a guy. He was with me in the army. Uh, he was with his wife in the airport, but he don't remember money. Uh, so he said to me, No English, how are you doing? <laughs> he don't remember my name. He remembered the story of no English. <laughs> his wife, she said, What's his name? <laughs> he said, No, no, this is not his name. <laughs> I will tell you later. His wife, she believed it, that the name, my name is no English. <laughs> Tony English, all right, let us see the news. Uh, yeah, so the Iranians, they are denying totally that there's no attack at all. But New York Times confirmed an attack on bases in Asfahan. Uh, the speaker in the name of the aerospace or air force he confirmed shooting down a bunch of drones uh, it might be a fart nothing really serious we thought it's a really the Israeli decide to do something serious maybe it's not uh, <coughs> Yeah, it looked like there's no news in the news. And you know, the, the funny is that those news agencies, they have two lines, they keep repeating them. <laughs> they have nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to open a news agency, you know. Especially these days, everybody have a phone. And, uh, you know, you hire a, a guy, you tell him, if you if something happened in your country, I will give you fifty dollars for the news. You, you you like to work for me? He says sure. <laughs> and then I will call it uh, 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 the Banana Republic News Agency. As a Christian, shouldn't we ban any country to have a nuclear weapon? Uh, no. What does this have to do with being Christian? Because simply, uh, actually, nuclear weapon is is uh, is a promoting peace. The reason right now, the Russian, the American, the Chinese, etc., they are going at war because of the nuclear weapon. Otherwise, trust me, history will repeat itself. They will be going at war. So the reason now they don't go at war because things can get serious and go out of hand. So nuclear weapon making the massive big countries behave. Yeah, if there's no new, new, you know, they will, you know, they will go at war.
if you disarm yourself, you did not promote peace. You promoted war. Uh, well, no, there is in Asfahan, there is a lot of uh, military bases. Yeah, they, they put uh, Air Force always around those uh, strategic location. Refinery, always. Close to them, they put air base, missile defense, etc. Because this is a strategic target. What do you think about Balkan? They have the same problem as all countries have Islam. Wherever Islam goes, hell come with it. This is the case everywhere. Bring Islam to anywhere. Bring Islam to heaven. Heaven will turn to be a terrorist place. See, the, the land is not the problem. Neither the people, the religion. Like, why Iran even an enemy to Israel? What, what, they, they are not neighbors, you know. What is the reason? Religion. This is a satanic cult. They cannot live in peace. They kill each other. Muslims, they kill Muslims non-stop. And Israel now is just an excuse to, uh, let us say, uh, uh, to beam the light of hate on, on a target. They have a lot of hatred. They have to come somewhere. Right? I'm looking here to see the news. Ah, the, the Israeli uh, announced now, the Israeli news, the army news, they they attack an Iranian army base where in Asfahan where the drones of Iran came from. So they are attacking uh, where the drone came from. Well, I don't know. I mean, if this is really uh, a serious attack because attacking where the drone came from is not effective. You should attack where the drone is made. What about attacking the manufacturers of the drone so they cannot make more? Right? Like what the drones came from? I mean, the drone can come from anywhere, from your yard. So what, you hit the ground? Right? So maybe it's only attack on the, I see here like there is an explosion. But we don't know. Yeah, I mean, if this is the attack that Israel did, this is a shameful attack actually, because this is not a big deal. That's it. So now you made yourself like you respond for what? Attacking, a, you know, like a road in the street and in the airport where the drone came from? This is not an attack. You know, when I heard the Israeli are responding, I said, wonderful, now they are going to teach the enemy how to behave for the coming century. This is not teaching them anything. This is nothing. It's just showing them we can arrive to your country. But the Iran, they knew that. If this is really what they did, this is a stupid attack. This is not even worth it. Yeah, so it might be only attack on one town, on one base. That's all. There's nothing really.
Yeah, this is very disappointing, by the way, for me. That's even stupid. They lost their opportunity. Now they cannot attack again tomorrow. And the day after, the American, they will say to them, that's it, you did it. Even we told you not to do it, you did it. So why are you going to keep going? So now, if, if this is over, and all this is, this is all what they have done, they lost a very great opportunity which will not be repeated again. See, the Iranian, they will not repeat the same mistake and attack Israel again. They knew now that all their weapon is useless. Their drones, their missiles, everything they have will never arrive. And in order for Israel to be able to attack in the front of the international community, if we can call it a community, they have no more excuse. If they attack again next week, it's going to show like they are the one trying to promote war. So this is their chance. And if they did not use it, the Israeli government are just a bunch of stupid. And this is my opinion. What war strategy? Where is the war? There's no war. This is not another thing. <laughs> war strategy. War strategy, you destroy the most important supply for the army, as in the enemy. So did they destroy the manufacturers of the drones? No. Did they destroy the nuclear facility? No. Did they destroy the refinery where the oil and money coming from? No. So what they did? This is just, it's like Middle Eastern, you know, Middle Eastern, they, uh, uh, you know, like there's two guys, you know, fighting, but how they fight, I will kill you, no, I will kill you, no, I will kill you first, no, I will kill you, but nobody even used weapon. So, what they did now, both of them, they are doing showtime, shooting on the, on the air. I will kill you. No, I will kill you. If you do that, I will kill you. No, I will kill you first. But nobody killing anybody. So should we encourage every country, even a small country, to reach and develop a nuclear weapon? I still think nuclear forbidden mass uh, destruction weapon my friend, it's not a choice. It's about encourage or not. If somebody have it, you better have it too. Otherwise, you are at risk. This is not about, I mean, why people they think in a, such a way? Is it like, is it about God now? Like, okay, I don't want to, I am a Christian, I don't want nuclear. But your enemy have a nuclear, so what do you do? So, it doesn't matter if you are small or big. Like now, Israel, if they have no nuke, all those Arab, their neighbors, they will eat them alive. Their country is not even four millions. Two million Arabs, four million Jews. Egypt alone is 100 million, their neighbor. So if they go at war, like let us say, okay, we will fight by the sword to defend ourselves. They will eat you alive. So if they don't have nukes, they are gone. This is not about being religious or not. It's about reality. If you disarm yourself and nobody disarm, are you are you stupid or is what? You're stupid. And this is my problem with the Christians. They have their own fantasy of life. Jesus never taught fantasy. Jesus taught reality, the one who lived by the sword, by the sword shall die. Jesus said to, to Peter, the, the, tell them, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. Christian don't quote that. They quote only Jesus last said, love your enemy. Yeah, they are very selective, like, like the Muslims.
We don't know. It might be nothing, really. For me, if you ask me, if I have a daughter and she want to get married, she introduced me like he, about a guy, he like her, he's a nice, he's educated, but he don't want to carry a gun, he never use a gun, he didn't know how to hold a gun, and he refused to have a gun, I will not approve him to marry my daughter. Who is going to protect my daughter? The neighbor? He's the husband. Weapon is not what make you criminal. It's when you use it unlawfully. When you commit a murder. So weapon never kill. Never kill. Unless somebody use it to kill. So there is a wrong understanding. Many naive Christians suddenly, I don't know where they get this from, that if you have weapon, you are not being a good Christian. That's false. A Christian with weapon is a better Christian. For he can protect his family, his children. His, uh, this is what your duty to do. All right. In the West, only police can protect you? No, in the West, police will take a picture of you after you die. How, how the police can protect me? I mean, if somebody is coming to me right now, by the time the police arrive, I will be dead. I mean, people are so silly. What police can protect you? <laughs> Police, they come after somebody shot you, not before. I mean, people, I don't know what kind of intelligence people they have. My friend, after the shooting happened, the police will come with the camera. Oh, this is CP. He have a bullet in the head. Okay, put his name, put his name, etc. Take a picture and open a case. Thank you very much. <laughs> what police will protect you? By the way, and maybe many of you do not know, I, I, I did serve in the police too. So I know how the police work. <laughs> yeah, the police. Anyone who depend his protection in someone else is a fool. I'm telling you, I mean, the police is good to call them. Yeah, you call them if something happened. But you have to be, you are the one who can protect himself first. And then when the police come, okay, thank you very much. But by the time the police come, if you don't have a weapon to defend yourself, you are dead. Yeah, police. All right, all right. Read the stories in the Old Testament. Read about war. Stop being naive. Stop being ignorant. Uh, the priest who is teaching you things about Jesus, he taught you many things wrong about Jesus. You know, when Jesus come, Jesus' first time came as a Savior. Second time he will come, He will teach the world how to behave. Hellfire. Gate will be open. The Lord, he said, bring them in front of me and slay them. So they can tell you whatever they want about Jesus, that God is loving, God is merciful, God from the mercy of God that he allow you to repent. But God's mercy is limited. Limited to time, your lifetime. When you die and you are not repenting, you are, you are dead already. And if you repent, just because you are afraid, not because you believe, 
your repent is not accepted. Because a person who repent because he is afraid only, that means he repent because of a fear. It's like somebody you put a knife in his head and you say to him, convert to Islam. So he don't want to die, he says shahada. If this is the reason for you to repent to God, well, that means you did not repent. It, you are just trying to avoid the result. It, in another way, you are just cheating. That will not work with God. So you have to repent from your heart to become a believer, faithful, before your time is up. But when your time is up, then the mercy of God is up with it. Uh, who wrote the New Testament? Donald Trump? Uh, Ayatollah Al Khomeini, how are you doing, my friend? Do you want me to wipe the floor with the with the face of your Khomeini? The guy in his book he wrote in the book of Tahrir al Wasila, he wrote how you can molest and have sex with a child. She is an infant. Do you want to show you the page? Al Khomeini? And you are talking about who wrote the New Testament. Isn't it your stupid God? He says he is the one that did it. Isn't it your stupid Quran says so? Potato. Go do muta, go. The Israelis are doing muta right now in Iran. Just to let you know, I mean, put your name in the list. They can do muta with you. Yeah. It is you who nobody knows who wrote the Quran. We have the, the Bible, it says that the, the, uh, uh, the book according to John. John is a disciple of Jesus. According to Mark, according to Luke. It's a, so we know who wrote the, the Old Testament. You, who wrote the Quran? According to your source, there is hundreds of writers. And by the way, you don't even have a page of the Quran. Where is the Quran? Not a single page. And which one? Anyway, do we have any Abdul have a comment about what's going on? So do you see, guys, the Iranian uh, uh, Muslims? You're scared, Israel. I mean, the Israeli are really scared, and your air defense is working, obviously. Let us see what will happen. But really, I'm, uh, uh, if you ask me, I'm really disappointed about this attack because this is useless. I mean, what, they attack a base? And this is where the drone coming from. That's it. Eh, not an Yahoo, an idiot. I have no respect for this man. Uh, oh, he's replying for someone? Ah, oh, okay. I don't know who's replying to who sometime. All right, no problem. Friendly fire, my friend, friendly fire. Any Abdul from Malaysia? Yeah, the Malaysian Muslims are very, very, very smart. I saw a video of a guy from Malaysia. He was a genius. He was describing how the donkey of the prophet have two wings which is very normal you know I mean prophet donkeys wings you know they come together it's like one package the and the donkey is a female and she's wearing a bracelet I don't know where he get the story that it's a female but uh, as I know yeah it's wearing bracelets it's true that because she is sexy, but the name is Al Burak. Burak is a male, uh, male. You are from Indonesia. All right, my friend. We welcome you here, Orang Orang. All people from Indonesia, we welcome here you, Orang Orang. Orang Orang, welcome.
tell you some police stories. Okay. File number one. Victim is unknown. Criminal is unknown. File number two. Victim is known. Criminal is unknown. Uh, uh, file number three. Uh, the victim, it turned to be he is the criminal. I mean, depend who is in charge of the case. And, you know, most of people who work really in the police don't deserve to be there. Uh, and it's uh, it's based on your luck, you know, if you, if the one who take the case is a smart or... When I was abroad, uh, somebody broke into my house. Uh, they did not take fingerprint uh, the police did not come for almost four days imagine four days after the break in four days no police show up they did not fake fingerprint they never asked the neighbors what happened they never did anything a police guy he went inside the house he looked I wasn't there you know he looked, as they told me. He did not do anything. He did not write anything. He, did not, you know, he just went okay, with his car and, you know. And he told the neighbor, fix the door. Fix the window. <laughs> police. <laughs> right? So the man who is the police you are talking about, there is useless police. There is a good man police. Yeah, there is police who so they are corrupt too. That's why you have, uh, you know, we are, we obey the law, right? And we trust God. Police is a different story because the bento is the policeman. The policeman, he can be good, he can be bad, he can be corrupt, he can be drug dealer. If you go right now and search in YouTube, see how many stories of policemen, they themselves, they are stealing. Policemen, they go inside the house to, uh, let us say, a search or something, or even you report a theft. They go inside the house and they themselves they steal, and they are recorded by cameras. They did not notice that the house owner he have a you know he have a security camera. Yeah, so there is a lot of corrupt people. Anyway, <clears throat> in any job, any profession, there is a scammers. There is a scammer, he can be your president, prime minister, a minister, congressman, a judge, a policeman, a priest, a prophet. <laughs> like, even religion is not safe from scams. There's many, they would like to become a priest, so they can scam people, you know, they can be like Muhammad. So people will respect them, you know, trust them, and then they use and abuse that trust. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did not hear that story. I'm the one who reported, my friend. I mentioned that story in video. Yeah, she is a Palestinian. She attacked the black Hebrew because she thought those are Israeli. When in fact those black Hebrew they are they hate the Jews, you know. Yeah, sorry guys, we thought there's an attack, it turned to be just a, a fart. Netanyahu did fart. They did nothing. Very, very stupid behavior. I don't know what's wrong with this guy. This is, was a golden opportunity to do something, and he lost it. When they are going to stop Iran from having nuke? Question, when? Why you do not do it now? Are you going to attack them when they have nukes? Do it now. Destroy their facility. will take them 20 years again to build it. What is this? When I heard the news, I really believed it, that this is a real attack. This is a joke. This is the same as the stupid Iranian, the same as they did when they attacked a few days ago. Their missiles hit nothing, hurt nobody. The Israeli now did what?
And you know, many stupid people, they think that they can exchange shame for, for peace. But I assure you that this never works. You will get the shame and you will get the war. Shame for peace never happened. Never work. For the one who shame you, he will not stop there. He just put you in shame. You are down. Why he will stop? He just noticed that you are weak. You are terrified. You are scared. Yeah, if this is really what's happening, this is a, this is a stupid attack. Israeli lost their mind. They are doing stupid things. This is, will hurt nobody. Will not hurt their enemy. Will not uh, stop their capability of hurting Israel. It's just a waste of a chance, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's an opportunity might not be repeated again that easy. Uh, Rob saying war never equal to peace. Uh, well, I don't know, Rob. I, I I think we can use you to to tie up uh, war. Your name is Rob. Let us use you to tie up war. You know, only idiot they think uh, by making a statement of sound like wise, like Rob. Well, like war is not equal to peace. Who, who care about what equal, what is not equal? War is real. Criminals are real. And they want to kill you. So you and your stupid peace doesn't work. Have you, do you hear about rape every day? Did you? Do you hear about people shooting people every day? Do you hear about someone going inside the mall, stabbing people every day? What war? What peace? You are stupid. So you can you can praise peace as much you want, but still there's a criminals. <laughs> people are stupid. People are silly. People are be, 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 I don't know. They are coming from the from the Greek of Latin uh, philosophy. The perfect city. There's a criminals, my friend. If you can live in in a in a world, whereas there's no army, there's no weapon. There's no hate, there's no killing. Then you can say what you are saying, war is not equal to peace, but you are a donkey. In fact, war is better than peace in this case, because if I launch war against criminals, I will eliminate them before they kill. But if I choose peace and the criminals are there, they will keep killing. Is that correct, people? It's like saying there's a bacteria. I want to have peace with bacteria. You cannot. Because if you don't attack them before they attack you, you are stupid. They are going to attack you. There's no question. So you can say I want to have peace. But this is a stupid idea because peace from one side is no peace. It's a stupidity. Peace can happen only if there is two groups, they believe in peace, and then peace for everybody. But peace will never happen if somebody want to kill and someone, he want to have peace. I notice always people, they have a low IQ. I'm not insulting you, by the way, but you have low IQ. You understand the world as a fantasy, like maybe, is, is your room pink? What is the color of your bedroom? Is it pink? Is your sheet pink? Do you see the world around you pinky? The world is full of criminals, thieves, scammers, liars, cheaters. And you are talking about peace. You're an idiot. Okay, I will give you an example about peace and war. Go right now. And tell your wife, I will not let you my, my credit card no more. 
Let us see how peace will be inside your house. You will sleep in the street immediately. Mr. Peace And wait until she call her mother. That even will be better. And maybe her sister. And maybe she tell the neighbors. And then maybe she posts something about you in Facebook. That her husband is not good in bed. All of this because you told her you are not going to let her use the credit card. What peace? Crazy people, man. Don't you see the women, they go to the salon and they set sharp in their nails? They are preparing for peace, my friend. They will make you pieces. Like, do you think women, they like, I mean, look, look at their nails. How they can even work with it? I know how they can type in computer, how they can wash dishes. Oh, I forgot they don't wash dishes. They use a... Uh, 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 like one time use uh, dishes who need them in these days that's it you know <clears throat> do you think Bashar Assad should be removed no I don't think so because if you remove him you will get who you will get the Muslim Sunni terrorist <clears throat> you know the whole idea again the Israeli made a stupid mistake American <clears throat> Obama uh, he wanted I mean many countries made mistakes about Syria this guy he don't care for Islam he is a Alawi he laugh at the Quran he laugh at Islam his, his people they are the same uh, Christians are free everybody is a free now not a free I mean he's a dictator for sure if you speak one word against him you will disappear but he is a billion times better than someone. He is a religious Muslim. So why do they want to remove him? Very simple. Qatar wanted to run a pipeline of gas all the way going from Qatar all the way through Syria to Turkey to Europe. That I said, because he is under the influence of Putin, he refused. For the whole idea is to make Russia go bankrupt by taking the Qatari gas, Europe depend on Russia. When the Assad refuse, well, okay, we will remove him. And then they start sending money from Qatar, like rain, even from Emirat, even Saudi Arabia, to remove the Assad regime by the support of Turkey. But then Putin, because he will never let that happen, because if they took over Syria, they will do the project and that will bankrupt Russia and nobody will buy their, their gas. So they were not removing him because he's bad or good. They were trying to remove him because they are evil. <laughs> you know, when they say to you, he's a dictator, well, you, why you don't want to remove the king of Jordan? What about the king of Saudi Arabia? What about Erdogan? What about Saddam Hussein? Oh, we removed Saddam Hussein already. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what about, I mean, all the friends of America are, are dictators. Name one for me is not a dictator. Just name one. Uh, you know. All right. Uh... All right, guys, look like there's nothing really important. And it it, it sounds like the Israelis just farted. Until we find the result of this attack, we will see. If it's an attack, we don't know. It might be nothing, really. So it might be what, what uh, Fox News making uh, big news is, might be, it might be nothing. very disappointing i'm not going to keep you longer i thought it is important it turned to be nothing really 
But let us see, let us see and wait for later. By tomorrow, we will find out what this was, this attack is about. But I can see from now, it's nothing really serious. And this Netanyahu is an idiot, as always. By the way, uh, 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 you know, the, the Muslim Sunni, they are praying for such a war to happen between Iran and Israel. Me, myself, I don't want really Iran to be at war with Israel. I prefer if the Muslim Sunni and the Muslim Shia, they are the one at war. This way, we get rid of both of their evil. Their money, which is sponsoring terrorism, will not be there no more. Right? <laughs> Somebody saying to me, describe, uh, explain to us Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32, verse number 8, 9. Uh, the, the verses is very clear that God, he favored the children of Israel. And... Uh, uh, you know, God, he divide what all nations will have. And he gave his people what they will have. What so? I mean, why even this one need uh, need interpretation for you? I mean, the, the, the text is very simple, very, very easy. Are you a kid? Are you a teenage? Isn't it all the all people in the world, they have their own land? Like, do you see people living in the sky? So everybody have his own land. Everybody have his territory. Everybody have his lack of uh, wealth or uh, property or, you know, whatever. So this is why it says, God, he gave every nation their wealth, their inheritance of this life in this earth, what they would have. Even this one need interpretation. When it's come to the Israeli, God, he gave the inheritance based on the children of, uh, of Israel, the numbers of the children. Well, I will not talk about Shia and Sunni right now. I think it's not important really uh, for the topic today. And again, guys, I, want, I don't want to keep longer. Look like the attack Israeli did is nothing based on what we hear in the news. So Netanyahu made a poo-poo. He did not even fart. He made a poo-poo. For if if he if this is really what happened, the attack a small base or little tiny base where drones are sent from Asfahan, that is the most stupid response. I mean the the, the, the Iranian they send at Israel sixty one tons of explosion. 61 tons did, did you see the big the, the how big the the the, the iranian uh, uh, missiles let me show you so shouldn't the israeli respond in the same way At least. At least. Let me try to find you some pictures. When you say, I'm going to respond, you respond. 
you respond in something fit for the attack and then now what I see this is just a stupid thing they did nothing seriously nothing yeah look at this do you see how how big the missile look at this did you attack them by missile like this I'm sure not based on the news we hear this is like 20 meters long all of this was full of explosion all of this look at this so if if what we hear in the news is what's happening it's nothing this is stupid this is literally stupid Yeah. And the funny is, obviously, the Iranian they were trying to cause a big casualty in Israel. So why the Israeli they want to cause a big casualty to their enemy? That is another question. There is there is something fishy is going on. I don't know. Yeah, but again, uh, I don't trust Netanyahu. Uh, this guy is just, uh, you know, he do things for political reason. He didn't do it to bring victory to his nation. And this is a great opportunity to destroy their nuke facility. But if they did not do it now, Israel will regret sooner or later. Look like soon we are going to have a nuclear war between the Muslims and Israel. Because the Israeli, they choose shame for exchange of peace but they will never get peace yet they will get the shame we will see what's going to happen so anyway guys thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you and i will try to come back live on air to, uh, tomorrow which is today already uh, today is tomorrow so how I'm going to come tomorrow if I'm going, if now today is tomorrow. Hold on, let me read the Quran. I need, I need the guidance of Allah. I'm getting confused. If today is tomorrow now, and tomorrow I'm going to come live. So how I can, how I can come tomorrow if tomorrow is today? Huh. Hold on, let me think about it. Tomorrow is today, and today is tomorrow. So now I'm going to come tomorrow. But already past the middle of the night, so it's tomorrow. So I think I should not say, I'm going to come tomorrow. I should say, I'm going to come today. Because it turned to be, after studying the case carefully, and President Biden, he is helping me here to understand the scenario, that today is tomorrow already, you know. So just correct the date, please. I will uh, be back tomorrow today, uh, like in the morning, afternoon. Okay. So like, you know, just now you have the time and everything. Uh, if you don't understand what uh, I'm saying to you, read the Kathir. <laughs> I just made Quran. Netanyahu is under pressure. What the pressure, what the tashar, my friend. Uh, come on. I mean, this is your country. This is your nation. You are the one in decision. It's about your country. What pressure? History History will not report the pressure. The history will report that you allow the enemy to have nukes and to nuke you. What pressure? Those people, they don't hesitate to kill you. They just send 61 tons of weapon to slaughter you. They are not even, you know, not even afraid to do it. What pressure? And trust me, nobody can pressure Israel. Whatever they say to you in TV, in newspaper, Biden, he said, etc. Reality is a different story. 
Reality is a different story. David, David saying, CP, I have, I have to get to say again that you are the best in the internet. David, for God's sake, are you doing shopping, my friend? <laughs> it's like saying to me, you are the best in Amazon. <laughs> what do you mean in the internet, my friend? Only in the internet? That's not a good thing. <laughs> So David, he decided to do shopping. Which one we listen to? Let us do shopping. We have this guy and this guy and this guy. So David, after searching very well in the internet, he came to the conclusion after shopping around in the internet that CP is the best in the internet. That's not a good shopping, my friend. <laughs> I thought you would say the best who speak about religion. Doesn't matter if I'm like. Doesn't matter if I am in the internet or not. <laughs> you think I'm good only in the internet, but outside, no. Oh, you got a point there. But the theater, Christian print is so good in the internet, but the reality is not good. Zachary, what internet, my friend, in the internet, and you cannot debate me. So, what will happen to you in reality? Christian print, first of all, tell me your faith. The reason you don't tell your faith because you are the beautiful. Zachary, I don't look good like you. <laughs> what I can say. <laughs> I mean, I bought an iron machine to iron my skin to make it look better, but it's not working. By the way, Zachary, what fertilizer are you using for your beard? Get the breath. I told you 1,000 times. I'm not using fertilizer, and I will never put fertilizer in my nether. You drink camel urine. You as a Muslim, you drink camel urine every day. And you are telling me you don't put fertilizer. So what is the difference between fertilizer, which is the shit of the animals, and the urine, which is the shit, the liquid shit? Is that the reason your beard is not working? You are drinking the liquid shit? Get the breath. First of all, urine is not fit. And what you are saying is a very thankful for the one Christian. Christian people should not use the word shit. Christian people should not use the word shit. Are you sure? <laughs> Muslims can use it. <laughs> anyway. Zakir uh, Naik. Uh, yeah. Uh, they have a threaten in this uh, Netanyahu to stop helping him, supplying him with Aaron Doom. <laughs> My friend, reality is different story. The Aaron Doom is a project not only for Israel, it's for America. And the Israeli is the one can threat America, not the opposite. Because simply the major number of scientists who work in this project are Israeli. It is Israel who can threat America, not the opposite. Major technology used by the American owned by Israel. So to make it simple, the Israeli and the American, they exchange power. It's not, it's not to America to flourish with power alone without Israel. They cannot. In fact, the first nuclear weapon made in USA, it made by Jews. So World War II, if it is finished, it was because of eight Israeli scientists. So just put it straight in its place. Those people are very when it's come to science, etc., they are very, very smart. The Israeli, give them the desert, they will make it a green. Go and go and see what they do. You know, the Negev desert, the Arab don't want it because of the desert. There's nothing there. Give them the desert, give them the desert, you know. Go, go and see what they did to the desert. Those are the Jews. When they took the city of, uh, of uh, uh, Yathrib, which Muhammad later occupied and called it Medina. That city was the most flourishing city because of farming. Who is the one who make it heaven? The Jews. So even 1400 years ago, the Jews, they made the heart of the desert heaven. So to say to me that somebody threat Israel, that can be in the news only. In reality, the story is different. In fact, Biden, he need to kiss their ass so he can win the coming election. All right. Uh, 
All right. Anyway, guys, so I want to say thank you all for being here. And I will try to come tomorrow, which is today, uh, to go live again. What is CP native language? I speak many languages, my friend. Don't you see? I speak Pakistani. Great and breath. First of all, my language is not Pakistan. And I'm from India. Okay, no problem. You go, but I'm just telling him what I speak. You know, I speak Pakistani. I speak uh, Orang, Orang Indonesian. I speak, my, my Arabic is not so good. <laughs> and I teach English in Oxford University, just to let you know, you know. Like my major uh, education is to teach English. Shakespeare. Shakespeare is my cousin. His real name is Shakespeare. He was a professor in the Islamic Terrorist University in Birmingham. You know, why they call it Birmingham? Huh? Bur Meng Ham. Mm, you know, focus on the last word. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so anyway, like, uh, uh, true story, exactly, true story. So anyway, like, I hope you learned something good. Uh, yeah, my, my, my native language is Arabic. Love you, CP, from Jakarta. Hey, I love you from Jakarta. Give me, send me some coconut. What kind of love? What I mean, this, this is, this, I don't like a dry love, sorry, <laughs> you know, send mango, send, uh, you have all those nice uh, roots there, uh, love from Jakarta, what the will do with this uh, love, you know, <laughs> I'm very old. I mean, do you see what people do to me? Love from Jakarta, like, well, okay, no problem, no problem. <clears throat> uh... Your first language is English. Could you teach me English? Very simple. You see the... Uh, okay, I will teach you something about English. And you tell me if you know this before. Do you know why why the word upset, or how the word upset come to exist? The cowboy, when they try to sit in the top of the horse, The horse go crazy. This is a wild horse. They try to make it, you know, able to be used normally. So when they put the seat, which the saddles, on the horse and try to sit on it, the horse go crazy. And this is where the word upset came in from. Did I make you upset by teaching you your English? <laughs> Yeah, so you see some like languages, sometimes the uh, words can come from a very weird reason. And sometimes even uh, like it's it's interesting to see how languages they developed, you know, they, how, how they come to existence. And I found that English language <clears throat> is way more simple than other languages. It's not too rich. Um, it is simple. Uh, I mean, for sure, in general, it's simple compared to other languages. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's very confusing too. <clears throat> like, you know, the in the English, they summarize some names by three letters or etc. So if you are a foreign person, you do not know what they are talking about. Uh, yeah, sometimes English feels stupid at the time. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, Arabic is a different story. Arabic, because it's not really a language by itself, is a collection of languages. So it became so fat with words. It's like a, it's like a big, uh, long train of words. Uh, and the words have nothing to do with each other and they are coming from many languages and that makes the language very difficult to the point an Arab person if you want to read a book he might need to check the dictionary 20 times 
when he is reading a page, especially if they are like a, using a language we are not using today or we, we are not used to it today. All right. So uh, languages, actually, if you study languages, you can find a lot of secret of many nations, like including the Bible, you know, uh, many things we do not know because we don't speak the original language and uh, the, the, the Bible have a lot of coding uh, let us say secret messages uh, wonderful messages like the story in the book of Genesis chapter 5 uh, you will find the coding there very nice coding Why the name of Yahweh appear in the Egyptian heliographic text, including two new kingdoms period text? Well, I don't know. The, you are you are mixing between the Egyptian language and the Hebrew. Uh, it's not Yahweh. There's no Yahweh in the Egyptian. However, the Egyptian they are introduced to Yahweh by having the Jews there. So. Uh, the the Egyptian they have a word yeah not Yahweh and it have totally different meaning from what the Yahweh in uh, Hebrew mean so just to show you how silly you are as an example the word kiss in Arabic is the same word for vagina in English so can we say now why the word kiss appear in English as a vagina can we say the origin is coming from there? So it can be the similar as a word, but they have totally different meaning because simply they are totally different languages and they have no connection to each other. And you are being silly. And it is not the word Yahweh. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> uh, you know if the words they are connected if they have the same meaning uh, and they are used in the same way then we can say they are the same but if they are not so in Hebrew Yahweh is not a name Yahweh is just a sentence says I am who I am it's not a name so you are being silly again so if that is an English is an Egyptian I am who I am then this is not even a name this is just a sentence People are idiots. Yeah, I think this guy here is just copying uh, from websites. He copy and paste and he think like he knows something. Anyway, thank you guys. But timeline that word was used 13 BC. Hmm. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Potato. Uh, is the word Yahweh is exist in Egyptian in the mean? First, there is no Yahweh. Secondly, is it the same meaning? So if there is many words, is exist in many languages and they are similar as a pronunciation doesn't mean they are the same language so you are being silly again same time do the egyptian they have a god his name is yahweh is that the name of the god of the egyptian are you there People make up stories and make up lies and they lie and they fabricate and you know we laugh. In the whole Bible there is no name for God. So when you are asking why this word appear here, why this word, you are stupid. You know when Moses asked God, he says, what I will tell you my people, what's your name? This is not a name. 
God is explaining that he is God. I am who I am, the one who is exist by himself. He did not give him a name. The Jews, they don't have a name of God. They never use one. Hashem, uh, uh, Il, uh, uh, Elohim, uh, none of them is a name. So because you are silly and stupid and you are ignorant, you think that this is a name is coming from different culture. When in fact, in the whole Bible, there is no name for God. Even the word, uh, you know, Christ is not a name. It's a title. It is description. Even the word Adam is not a name. It is description, a human being. Even the name Abraham is not a name. It is description of what he did. He crossed the river. He crossed, he crossed from a... From the from the infidels to believe, uh, he crossed from the other side. Even Moses is not a name; it is the one who was saved from drowning. Even Israel is not a name; it is the one who struggled with God. Even the names of the angels are not a name; it's a sentence. So you are stupid and you are silly. Because you are ignorant, you think those are names. But in the whole Bible, there's no names, no names. Even the children of Noah, children of Adam, they are not names. They are description. So they sound a name for you because you are a donkey and you do not know languages, but they are not names for those who knew the language. Arabic is the, the a different depend on where you live. Pronunciation, the street language is different, but uh, there is a classic language they use. It is not. Like the one they write uh, books, classic books with it. But the street language, it can be huge different. Like if somebody from Morocco speaking to me, I will have a very hard time to understand why. Because Morocco, and they are not Arab, and they have in their language a lot of words mixed they have the Amazir, they have the Barbarian, the French, Italian, uh, Arabic. So all of this mixed together. And this is what they use now in the street. <clears throat> yeah, there is no name can describe God. There is no name can describe him. So when we say the Messiah, one of his name is Emmanuel. But this is not a name. He shall be called Emmanuel. God is with us. You see, even this is not a name. It describes who is with us. That is the Messiah. The names of the angels, none of them is a name. Gabriel, Michael, etc. None of them is a name. Uh, is description of who what they are and what they do. Uh, Everything in the Bible, but as you see, people are just silly, uh, you know, and they say stupid things. Mr. No reply, Yahweh is mentioned in the Bible. It doesn't matter how many times it's mentioned, it's just a word for God, how he described himself. Just get out of here, you're being stupid. Is it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many times it's mentioned, it's just a sentence. Of how God he described himself so if I want to talk about now God who described himself to me I use that word <laughs> so what does that mean seven times seven times seventy eighty thousand times million times you are just an idiot not a single name in the Bible is a name even Satan Only foolish people think that those are names. There's no names in the Bible. Even the Bible, the word Bible is not a name. <laughs> Same as Jehovah is not a name. There's no name. There's no name. Go check, go right now, type the Jehovah, jo what the word Jehovah? Is it Jehovah really? Type it in the internet and see what it is. You will see then. So people, they are not, they don't have knowledge. And they have big mouth and they say things. 
<clears throat> and because you know they they try to attack the faith, so they say, oh, maybe this is taken taking it from the Egyptian. The Egyptian, uh, you see the uh, the oldest belief in the Middle East, which is not godly, is those who they are living in north of Iraq. Those are the people of Abraham. Those people who they are called Sabian, the Sabian, their religion expanded all the way to the Middle East, all the way to Egypt. And those people, they believe that the God of the Jews, he is evil because he destroyed the Sabian of Egypt. And they laugh at Yahweh and they say, He is the God, the devil, who commanded them to do circumcision. So if the Egyptian and the Jews, they have one God, and both of them, their name is the same, then why the Sabian, who is the Egyptian, they were Sabian too? You know, the, the Sabian, the, the, uh, even the, the temple, the old, very ancient temple of al Makkah. The word Mecca is coming from that name, al Makkah in, in Yemen. Even those people there, they were Sabian. So the Sabian believe that the God of the Jews is evil, is bad, and they make fun of them because he command them to do circumcision. So this is, will, will refute all the statements you are trying to say. For if they have the same God name, then why the Sabian, who the religion of the Egyptian, belong to them they will make fun of the god of the jews and they will say he is our enemy that's a very stupid idea it's two different languages words have different meaning and they are not even the same pronunciation you know just to show you an example if i type now the word muhammad for you you don't speak arabic so what do you say Muhammad, but in Arabic we never heard of such a name. Muhammad does not exist. Never, we never heard of names like this. The Arabic name is Muhammad. So if the stupid you now found that the word Muhammad in English appear let us say in the Sanskrit language there is a person his name is Muhammad there then you will say oh they are staying in the same world but no they are not this is different it's not even the same world it doesn't even have the same meaning it's not from the same culture and they are not connected and even the pronunciation is wrong so when you read what is written in the uh, in the Egyptian in Latin letters that does not present the name for we don't have in latin equal letters to the egyptian the same you don't have letters equal to the hebrew the same you don't have letters equal to the arabic so it might appear for you when you read latin letters they are close to each other but in fact they are not uh you know like as an example uh the Quran speak about a person his name is Haman. Haman. Haman in the Quran is a minister in the Babylon to the king of the Assyrian. But the true Haman I mean there is obviously a confusion for Muhammad about what about what he's talking about. So then the Muslim they say to you, Well, there is a name discover, a person his name is Haman. Let me show you. But in fact, his name is not Haman. In the Hebrew, they have different letters. Because you don't have the same letters, then you try to make it similar. So the same we did with Muhammad. We replace the letter Ha with Ha. So now Muhammad become Muhammad. Same as Haman, because they don't have Ha in English or in Latin. 
now they use H. So suddenly the name Haman become Haman, Ha. But it's not. It's not the same name. Have nothing to do with each other. But if you write them in Latin, they look sound the same. They are written the same. And they pronounce the same. But if you go down to the original language, you will find that the author is different. Pronunciation is different. Letters is different. And meaning is different. All right. I hope I explained to you what I mean. Languages, you know, there's there's a guy I met him once in a church. He told me, "Can you give me? Uh, we like to watch some Arabic uh, movies. If there's like good Arabic movies, have no bad things in it." I said, "Yeah, I can find you something like good for family." He said, please be sure there's no dirty words or anything. I said, sure, sure. So I gave him a, you know, I gave him a movie. I Actually, I, I rented it from the library. Uh, I gave it to him. And then he says to me, my daughter, you know, what, what you did, man? My daughter, she called me. She said, they are using bad words. I said, what is the word you heard? He said, the P-U-S-S-Y, you know? I said, oh, no. This is, listen, this is not a bad word. This is the name of the actors, the actress. He said, her name is this. I said, yeah. <laughs> this is her name. <laughs> so the guy, he thought, they are speaking bad words. But in that language, it's not a bad word. It's the name of the actress. In your language, is a vagina. In their language, is something totally different. So his daughter, she said, Dad, Dad, look what they are saying. You, yeah? you know, what? I said, what? there's no, what are you, I'm, I'm sure there's no dirty language. So he mentioned to me, he said, I said, no, this is the name of the actress. Yeah, this is her name. <laughs> you know? Uh, once I met an, an American guy, and without saying his name, you guys might know him, he's famous actually. So his wife, in Arabic, is the same as Zach and Nick. Her, you know, her name is Nika, you know. <laughs> but in Arabic, that word means if her. <laughs> this is what the word means in Arabic, if her. <laughs> same as Zach and Nick. Nick means the one who is doing ifing. But a donkey, he might come and say, okay, here we go. See, this is the same word. He will go. No, this is not. This is a different culture, different language, different meaning, different place. Everything is different. So it sounds the same, pronounced the same, but it's not the same. Is it true that the word fart mentioned 14 years ago? The word fart, you do not need to mention it, you do it. <laughs> Israel did not launch any missiles at Iran. Yeah, it might be a fart. <laughs> so I don't know what Fox News is talking about. We will see. Time will tell, my friend. Time will tell. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. I mean, it sounds stupid, silly. In the Middle East, we say about this, like somebody who thought it's a fart, it turned to be a diarrhea. Uh, and until now, there's nothing really in the news. Well, we will see. I hope Netanyahu is not, uh, he did not make a small fart and he go. All right. So thank you, guys. I said thank you 10, 10 hours ago. I mean, like, come on, it's time for me to go. Thank you very much. And we will see you tomorrow, which is today. And until today, which is tomorrow, come. I say to you good night. It's time for me to uh, sleep. And uh, otherwise, you know, Jibreel, he might come and check on me. And he delivered me Quran at the late of, at the night. And when Jibreel come to me at night, you know, it's dangerous because 
I ate garlic and uh, Zabriel he said uh, you know Allah don't like those who eat garlic and I ate garlic already so I'm really at danger now uh, it's called the garlic symptom you know <laughs> let us see if the number of the viewers will, will go shrink do you know that it's forbidden for a Muslim to eat garlic garlic onion and what I forgot the name in English I know the name in Arabic but I forgot uh, weird Muhammad what we can say time for me to sleep God bless you all love you all and you can hate me as you wish and as you wish Muslims take care God bless you God is good so is Jesus I mean